is episode 32. Want to start a movement? It's all about shift strategy. Welcome to Alive by Design. My name is Blake Mallon, and we're here to bring you inspiring people, principles, and practices to help you wake up, move toward your meant to, and feel fully alive. Open your mind, and let's dive in. Hey guys, before you listen to the podcast, I just want to drop in and say I appreciate you for being here and I'm super excited about this new Walk With Me series. These are solo episodes where I take some time in the middle of my morning run through the Santa Monica Mountains to share some inspired ideas and thoughts on my mind and heart. If you want to join me for any of these conversations live, you can catch me many mornings on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash blakemallon.page. Would love to see you there. Love you guys. Enjoy the episode. Walk with me for a few minutes. So there's a lot of shift in the air right now. You know what I mean? Change, evolution, innovation, progress, growth, reinvention. Shift. I think when it comes to making long-term lasting, meaningful shift. There's kind of two approaches, right? Shift can come top down. It can come from a group of leaders who have the privilege of sitting in a seat where they can dictate a direction, give a direction, pass a policy, give a law, instruct, And for sure, shift can happen top down. Matter of fact, I think a lot of shifts that we experience probably start that way, but that's not the only way or the only place the true, lasting, impactful shift can begin. It's not limited to top down. You see, major shift can also begin bottom up, meaning we're the power of the people, the power of community. Ooh, snake. Hear that? That be a rattle. Got to keep my eyes on the path here this morning. Sun is out. Heat is out. Which means snakes are out. But when I talk about creating shift from the bottom up, I mean the power in the community, the power in the people, the power of the collective voice, strength in numbers, the power in the majority. And I think the greatest way to create shift from the bottom up is the power of a movement. I've always been fascinated by the concept of a movement. And I want to talk about what I think it takes to create a movement, specifically five phases that we must go through to create a movement that will lead to lasting shift. I know that the most valuable thing we all have is our time, no matter who you are, where you are, what you have going on. In your life right now, I appreciate the break you're willing to take to walk together, talk together, grow together. And let's have a collective conversation today on how to make a shift, but more so how to create a shift that's within our control, bottom up through the power of a movement. Let me check in, question for all of you. How many of you right, can define movement. Like, what's a movement to you? Drop a comment below if I were to say, like, what's a movement of people? How do you describe that? How do you define that? We'd love to hear your perspective. Maybe give me an example of a a movement that resonates with you, a reference you may have. For me, I've always been fascinated with the concept of a movement. There's just something about a group of people all united around a worthy cause. I'll even go so far for my definition to say a noble cause because 
Obviously, you can have movements around any cause, but to me, I'm attracted, I'm inspired by people united around a noble cause, some sort of vision for better that all manage to come together, unite together, and move forward together, unified to create a change. And I think, you know, history leaves clues. If we look back in our history books, some of the greatest shifts that made us better, that led to better, that got us to where we are today, it wasn't because a group of people waited to be dictated to from top down, it's because a group of people got passionate about creating a shift, organized, and moved forward together until it was an undeniable outcome of the future. And there's just something about that, something powerful, something alive about the concept. And I've always been fascinated by just the ability, like what is it that brings people together, unifies people together, organizes people together, and moves people together in a way that can actually create change versus, you know, the millions of other noble ideas that never can get the energy behind it to really fully make a, a real shift. And I've spent a lot of time thinking about this. Obviously, a lot of you know my background. You know, my 20 years of my career has been focused on community marketing, working with communities of people, organizing communities of people around, you know, a similar vision, a similar mission and moving communities together. That's, that's why I love what I do. That's why I'm in the industry that I'm in. So there's something about that. And to me, I think there's five phases of what I'll call the, the shift strategy, but five phases to create a movement. And I want to share with you guys this framework and I want to ask you the question, what can we apply these five phases to right now in today's time and even more directly, more personally, where can you fit in? Where can we fit in? Because today, just knowing is not enough. We got to know and we got to do, we got to know and we got to apply, we got to know and we got to be the example. And that's my hope for today's conversation is to inspire a framework that allows you to reflect and then mobilize. And I think it's super relevant today because right now we are in the middle of a climate shift. Changes in the air, the stage is set. And this can be something that's such a magical time, a monumental time, a historic time that could lead us to a better place if we handle what's going on correctly. So first phase, I would say it's called awaken. Phase one, awaken. You see, everything starts with awareness. You cannot shift what you are not aware of. So in the awaken phase, that's when the unknown becomes known. That's when what was unconscious becomes conscious. That's when it goes from a level of not knowing or maybe not even knowing that you needed to know to a level of awareness. Morning. To a level of awareness where you can begin to realize and process. In the awaken phase, this is where you got to shine a bright light on maybe what was dark before. And there's so many ways you can create awareness today. What are some ways today that people are creating a massive mainstream awareness around a new idea, around a different perspective, around a new thought? Or maybe it's not even a new idea, a new thought, but a new way of looking at it or a new way of acting on it. We can use our voice. We can rally. We're seeing protests right now. In today's digital age, the same psychology applies in the virtual world through our social media, our videos, our posts. 
our traditional media, our channels, our news, or just sharing a conversation with your local community, your neighbors. These are all ways that we can help awaken people and create awareness around what needs to shift. Everything starts with awareness. You cannot shift without awareness. It's the most important phase because it's the first phase. And without that phase done effectively, you can't move on to the second phase. So phase one, awaken. After people start to wake up, start to become aware, start to see from a different vantage point, we can move to phase two. And phase two is learn. Learn. See, here's what's important. In order to create a shift, we don't need to know all the answers. None of us knows all the answers. But we got to believe that collectively all of us together have the answers. You see, I always believe that all the pieces of the puzzle are already on the table. You just got to be willing to look through all the pieces, wade through all the pieces, receive all the pieces, and you got to get all the pieces. And if you have all the pieces, you can begin to put the puzzle together. We collectively are the pieces. The people are the pieces. You see, if you try to create a movement in isolation, (laughs) you're not going to have a group of people following you. You'll just be out for a walk, (laughs) kind of like I am right now. If you want to unify a group, you got to represent the whole. You got to realize the power is in the different perspective. The power is in the diversity. The power is in the variety of experience. The power is in the collection, right, of perspective. The power is in the community. So you got to be willing to step back and listen to what people are seeing, feeling, thinking. One of the things I'm proud about what's happening, you know, right now, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement is it feels like we move into the second phase really quickly where people are starting to really openly listen and hear and absorb without instantly attacking, diminishing, belittling, judging. You don't get me wrong, some are. But there's a lot that are willing to listen. So we awaken people, we shine the light, and then we listen to what the community is saying to gather our input, to get the perspective. Once we feel we've got enough perspective from enough people, we can move to phase three. You guys, phase three in the shift strategy? Connect. Connect. Now, when I talk about connect, this is where we start to see the importance and the value of leadership. What's a leader? How would you define a leader? Who are people you look up to right now as a true leader? What are the commonalities, the consistent patterns, the character traits of leadership, because there's so many different types. But one thing I can tell you that is common amongst different leaders is leaders are able to see more than others see, and they're able to see before others see. And once they see more than others see and before others see, they're able to put that into a vision and a strategy that then others can see. That's leadership. So when I say phase three, connect, it takes people to step up. People have to rise. Someone has to grab the ball. Someone has to take the wheel. Someone has to step up into a leadership position and start to connect the pieces of the puzzle, start to connect the dots, start to take all of the vantage points and be able to see the bigger picture, be able to look at it from above and create both a vision and a strategy that people can see, that people can feel, that people can do. 
And without leaders stepping up, and it doesn't have to be a single charismatic leader. It can be a, a person, a group of people, a larger group of people, but there needs to be leadership and the leadership needs to be unified. If this step doesn't happen and people don't step up, we get stuck in phase one and phase two. People are woke, right? They woke up. People are listening, but it's just gonna end with a lot of noise. It's just gonna end, right, with a lot of conversation. It's not gonna move to shift unless somebody is able to distill all the information into a unified vision and a cohesive strategy that people are willing and wanting to follow. Leaders need to step up. And that's what happens with Connect. Otherwise, the potential movement dies at just a bunch of noise. It's an important step. And the reason it's important is generally when it comes to movements, leaders are not appointed. <laughs> they are not granted. Usually when it comes to movements, you know, they are not selected or anointed. Leaders lead. Leaders lead. Leaders don't have to have permission to lead. Leaders just lead. Step four, once we have a leadership group that's able to connect, here's the vision, here's the strategy, here's the set of steps that everybody can unify behind. Now we can begin to move forward cohesively. Step or phase four is mobilize. And just like it sounds, mobilize is where you have a group of individuals that all believe in the vision, that all believe in the cause, that all believe in the shift, that all want to see the better future, but now actually have a action plan, a set of steps to move cohesively in a unified direction. And it has to be a single unified direction. If everybody begins to mobilize in a different direction, you don't have a movement everybody scatters and you lose your energy. You guys, the power of mobilizing, the power of a movement is a group of people taking what can be small, simple steps, but all taking those same steps in the same direction at the same time. You see, that's the power of a movement. That's the difference between an army marching and a group of people scattering is the unification of simple steps in the same direction, in unity at the same time, creates a movement that creates an energy. Motion creates emotion. Momentum begins to create more momentum. You get enough people marching by the same beat, singing by the same song, moving in the same direction, pretty soon you start to get social proof. And the more people that start to row in the direction, the more people that want to row in the direction, and it becomes a tipping point where at first you get the early adopters moving and then all of a sudden it starts to grow and pretty soon it starts to become a mainstream then pretty soon it starts to become a majority and pretty soon you hit a tipping point where shift is inevitable. It's impossible to deny, it's impossible to stop. It becomes a new norm. Which moves to phase five shift. If all of that happens, people awaken. We shine the light. We listen. We hear all of the input and perspectives. Leaders step up and connect a vision and a strategy that people will rally behind. And we mobilize. Marching in unison, similar direction, same time to build the momentum, well then last phase is shift. What ends up happening is we get a shift in our experience, which means we start to shift our references, which means we start to shift the way that we think, the thoughts that we have. And as people start to shift the thoughts that we have, we start to shift our beliefs. And that might take a lot of time depending on how long the beliefs we're up against have existed, how stuck they are in people's minds, but you do it long enough with enough passion and enough consistency, you shift the beliefs. 
And once you shift the beliefs, you start to shift the language. And once you shift the language, you start to shift the actions. And once the actions start to shift consistently with enough people, then you shift the outcome. It's inevitable. You guys, and that's how a shift works. So five phases of framework in my mind that kind of captures or summarizes the steps of creating a movement. Why did I decide to share this with all of you guys today? Why is this on my mind right now? Because this is happening in the world today. The stage is set in so many ways, right? The pandemic has been such a challenge, such a devastation on so many different levels. And my hearts and prayers go out to everybody that has been affected, families, health, finances, careers. And I don't wanna minimize all of that, but the stage is set right now for a real shift. There's so much awareness that it has been created. Awareness when it comes to the importance of our environment. Awareness when it comes to the importance of connection and community. Awareness when it comes to the importance of our freedoms and the things maybe we took for granted. There's so much awareness happening. Black Lives Matter, doing an amazing job, shining the light, starting to listen, leaders starting to step up. We're moving through the phases. You guys, it's not just limited to those things. There's so many different opportunities right now that are primed for a shift. Maybe this phase of life shines a light on the holes in our educational system where right now we're not able to continue to do what has been done. So it's forcing us to do something different. So rather than a disadvantage, maybe it's an advantage to start to reevaluate and how to make it better, create a shift in that system. Our economic system, our career force, All of it right now, the glass has been shattered, the system has been stopped. And yes, that is a challenge, but that's also an opportunity. And it's an opportunity, guys, to apply this framework in any way you're passionate about. We're able to create awareness right now unlike ever before. And if we're willing to then listen to people that share a similar belief and people will step up to start to connect a vision and a strategy and mobilize enough people in a direction, we can create a lot of shift right now to make tomorrow a lot better than yesterday, to make our future a lot better, right, than the past, and to create true, lasting, impactful shift for a better tomorrow. So my question for all of you is where are you in the world right now with what's happening? What's something you're passionate about, a shift you wanna see, something you feel needs to change And I challenge all of you to fall into the framework where you can fall in, help create awareness, help speak up and listen to others. Maybe you are the leader that's needed, right, in that arena right now to step up and create a vision and a strategy. And maybe you're someone that's just ready to row, ready to walk, ready to march, ready to align, ready to help create the momentum that's needed to create long lasting change. Everyone has a role, you can play a role and you can make a difference. So guys, find something that speaks to your heart. Find something you're passionate about shifting. Right now, there's so much opportunity. And if we can just unify in the right directions with the right groups of people, I think we'll look back in two years and five years and 10 years at this period of time, this monumental season of life, where all of a sudden it wasn't a regression, right? It it wasn't a, a, a devastation. We look at this period of time as, wow, that was a catalyst a catalyst to so many amazing shifts that created a better future. That's what I believe we're living in right now. That's the opportunity I believe is on the table right now. And that's the framework I believe that can work in so many different ways when applied with the right people and the right compassion and the right leadership. I wanted to share that with all of you guys today. You guys tell me, What are you passionate about? What's something you want to align with? Something you want to fuel? What stage is it in and how can you help? Let's all rise together. Let's all grow together and let's all make a shift in so many different ways together. And as always guys, I appreciate our time together for those of you guys walking with me. I appreciate all of you. I appreciate the perspective. Until next time, everybody stay safe, stay sane, stay healthy. But this week, don't just sit back passively. We're in the middle of a shift right now. Figure out how you can make a difference, how you can make an impact. Have a great day, everybody. 
Hey guys, one last thing. I'm super excited that this new podcast, The Live by Design, just went live. You see, I designed the show to bring you inspired thoughts and fascinating conversations with the world's most impactful people, to provide transformative principles and practices to help you wake up, move toward your meant to, and feel fully alive. And I'd love for you to help me spread the word now. Simply subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on this platform right now. So if I've ever given you value, please do me this personal favor and go subscribe now. And if you found today's episode helpful in any way, make sure you share this with at least one friend today. You have the power right now to change someone's day. So send them a text message with a link to alivebydesign.com or simply copy and paste the link right from this podcast platform. Who's one person you know right now that you want to see succeed, that you want to see grow, that you want to see feel more alive? Shoot them a text with your largest takeaway from today and be a light in their day. And if you were referred here by a friend, make sure you shoot them a text back and say thank you. I'd love to hear from you directly on what you got from today's podcast. So if you're up for it, drop by my Instagram at Blake Malin and shoot me a DM. And as always, thank you for showing up. I'm grateful for you. And I hope our time together today in some small way helped you feel a little more alive. Until next time.